In this video, I want to show you an expression which massive clickbait alerts will blow your tiny minds. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett, this is The Video Shop, and welcome to this video, which is basically an excuse for me to edit together a bunch of clips of exploded heads. That is fantastically disgusting. The expression we'll be looking at is this layer name split. It might not sound like much, but it makes animations like this easier, ones like this possible, and helps you avoid third-party plugins to create ones like this. I've only scratched the surface of how it can be used in a clever creative way. I'm pretty sure you lot could come up with some far more amazing stuff than me. Before we start, it was only when I nearly finished this video that I came across this by Motion by Nick. But by then I already had all these exploding head clips, got my scanners t-shirt, what was I meant to do, change the title? By the way, there are legitimately genius level folk out there when it comes to this stuff. I'm thinking of Dan Ebert's, oh my, astonishing. Zach Lovett and Noel Honig, who teach a course on expressions for school to motion. If you want to know expressions properly, start with these guys, because this is me working with expressions. But hopefully if I show you how I use them, it might inspire you to create work far more creative than I'm capable of. As always, you can find links for free downloads of all the project files below, so you can always look under the hood if you can't stand the sound of my voice, or aren't a fan of AT's practical special effects. Lastly, all the expressions we're going to look at, you can copy and paste from the description below. Okay, let's get started. Just do it! Let's say we wanted to animate this star frame, which someone tells me is a strap line for a famous sports brand. Nikki, I think it's pronounced? Never heard of them, but it sounds to me more like what passes for sex talk when you've been married for 30 years. Just do it already! Here's our animation using keyframes. Got a camera parented to a null, with keyframes on position and rotation, and then our 3D text layer is being masked off as we rotate round. And we've got a load of outline text layers staggered in dead space. Our client, let's call them Nick, says great, but can we have them staggered a bit further apart? So you have to go to each layer and adjust the Z position value. Okay, I'm not doing any more. This client doesn't even exist. Here's the same animation without all the text outline duplicates. I'll start by adding a null and naming it control, which I do for most of my projects. It means all the important stuff you want to keyframe will be at the very top of your timeline window. Nice and neat and tidy. Then I'll add a slider control and rename it Zcap. And we'll give it a value of 50. Then I'll click on the Z position of our outline layer and add our layer name split expression. The comma between our rabbit ears here is what the expression is looking for. You could have anything here. And the one in brackets is where the expression is looking at. One means after our first comma, so we get an output value of one. If we add another comma, a 99, then change the one to a two, we get an output value of 99. But I'll undo that as we don't want that. Now all we need to do is add an asterisk for multiply, then pick whip to our Z-gap slider here. And we have a setup where we only need one set of keyframes, rather than keyframe each bloody layer. Because we've named our outline text layer 01, when we duplicate it, those copies are 02, 03, 04, etc. So each layer's output value is the same value, and each one is multiplied by the Z-gap value we input in our control null. So we get these staggered text layers without having to keyframe each one. Much easier. By the way, some of you clever clogs might be thinking, why not just use the index expression, which is far more simple. You just type index and it outputs this value. The only problem is when you add layers above it, the index value will change. This is why I prefer this layer name splits, even though it's a bit more of a mouthful. Right, what if instead of the layers fanning out in Z space, we want them to appear one by one like this? We can use the if else expression for that. First, we'll add another slider to our control null and name it show copies. We'll pop four in there for now, so we can test it in a second. Then we need to add our expression to the opacity of one of our outline text layers. We'll use the top one, as if we do it correctly, it should give us an opacity of zero, since we only want four copies visible. We need the layer number of 13, which we'll get by copying that part from the Z position expression. We need to make it a variable, so we'll type x equals, then paste. X is just a random letter, we could put anything here. Maybe T for opacity would have made more sense. Fuck it, too late now. Then SC for show copies equals, and pick whip to that slider. Add another colon, although this is just force of habit for me. After Effects is updated recently, I think, so this expression will actually work without any colons, or maybe I'm talking here. Then if we type if open bracket x, which is this layer's number, is greater than the number of copies we want to see, which is sc, close bracket, give it a value of zero or else, something like a lame playground threat, give us your crisp or else, I'll duff you up. Give us a value of 100, and we get zero. To test our expression isn't just giving everything a value of zero because I fucked it up, let's paste it to layers four and five. Boom, that works. I'm a genius with entry level expressions. If we jump to this comp, we can see quickly how handy that expression is. I've got rid of all the other animation, so we can just see the layers turning on. Let's duplicate this layer a bunch of times so we've got, well, 
this number of copies. No, I like round numbers, 80. And then we can keyframe from zero to 80. Preview. It's a bit linear, so we'll easy ease and go into the graph editor. That's better. And we can adjust the distance between the layers easily now. Now, if we keyframe the opacity of those layers, they'll be sitting on different frames, but the easing would be a nightmare. A lot of the time with expressions, and depending on what you want to achieve, it's worth that little bit of time setting them up at the start, and then the animating after that is so much easier. And if you set it up properly on just one layer, all you need to do is duplicate that layer, and then keyframe your null. Right, I think it's time for another exploding head. Okay, technically exploding body. Little palette cleanser there. Here's how I used the layer name split expression when I was trying to emulate this animation. This isn't a step-by-step -step tutorial, just a walkthrough. I might do something more in-depth in the future. Animate some 3D layers so they loop. Make the comp 200 frames a second in a comp set to Cinema 4D Renderer. The letters are extruded and the extrusion and color are expression controlled by a control null. The extrusion is set to 6 and the color to off-white. This is the front of our text. Duplicate this comp and name it back. Keep all the same settings but make the color gray. Then pop the front and back layers in a new comp with the same settings. Make sure you check continuous rasterization. And then we'll do something similar to the Just Do It animation. Make sure you rename your layers so you've got a comma followed by a number. Then add a slider effect with the layer name split expression on it. We'll control the Z and the X position using expressions, which use layer name split and a slider control on a null, same as before. And lastly, enable time remapping and create an expression again using layer name split, which means as the gray duplicates of our white text fan out behind, we can control their time value. I'll replace the animation with time code so it's easier to see. If I hand solo one of them and adjust the time slider on our null, we can see a bit more clearly what's going on. So with the time slider set to zero, they're the same. Then as we increase it, the layers fanning out behind are going back in time. So here we are in a final comp. We've got loads of copies of our grey text, 240. I'll just shine them. And if we untoggle the control null, these are our settings. You can see in the top view here that they're staggered back into the right. And we've got a camera here. But because the camera is close, we've got perspective, which we don't want. But if we use a camera with faux long lens settings, it'll reduce the perspective and flatten things out. So basically that means having it pushed way back in Z space and then zooming in the same amount to compensate. And then we get this look. And finally, if we add some lights with settings similar to these, it'll give us this. And that's it. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.